by KCT 2026 aspirants. So almost we are now where we are just left with nine months for KCT 2026 examination. Now you might feel that there are too much time left for us, but it is not actually true. As you go, as the time passes, you will be packed with so many things like your PU exams, your pre-board exams, practical exams, your assignments, your other entrance exams, JE exam, right? So that at that time you might feel that time is less now. So now if we get serious and we follow these five rules, okay, what I'm going to say you in this particular video, then you will definitely end up getting top 1000 rank in KCT examination and I can guarantee you that. So if you are ready to target this, to take this challenge that you will be following these five rules for the next nine months, put down in the comment section, challenge accepted and let's start the video. So first of all, let me talk about what all things, what all five rules that I have for you all people the first one is to understand the syllabus okay I will tell you a huge change that has happened in the syllabus or in the question pattern of the exam compared to 2024 and 2025 so I have been teaching from last one uh, last three four years and there's a huge change in the pattern in 2025 examination and that led us to think again how we should strategy or how we should prepare our KCT preparation. Next we have don't ignore PU boards. Okay, I'll tell you what you know what is the importance but I'll be explaining it in more detail. Then choosing the right resources. Okay, you do not have more time now that you are reading from hundreds of resources now. So what should be your final list of resources that I'll tell you. Next we have correct study strategy how to manage PU and KCT together, how you should be having your per day plan, that also I'll be talking about. And lastly, your mock test, okay? What is the importance of mock test and how many mock tests you should be giving ideally to get into top rank, okay? So let's talk about the first tool that is understanding the syllabus. So generally, if I see till 2024, okay, let me just use the yeah so if I see till 2024 we observed that PU2 was having much 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 high weightage than PU1 so almost 45 questions were from PU2 and 15 to 10 questions were from PU1 but in 2025 there is a change here PU2 is still greater but not much 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 now we can find 40 to 20 ratio means almost 20 even in sub subject 25 questions 35 25 questions were there from PU1 so now what we have understood that we cannot ignore PU1 syllabus like we used to do because I found a lot of comments in the last few months of the examination ma'am if we ignore PU1 can we still crack KCT you can definitely crack KCT but your rank will be def uh, will be affected if you are not planning PU1 properly because the exam is becoming more and co more competitive and PU1 weightage has also increased. So what we have to do, don't ignore PU1 now, okay? And you have to complete the PU2 syllabus by October, okay? If you are doing, if you are going to school and colleges, mostly by October, the syllabus will be covered for most of the subjects. If not, you have to plan your self-study and you have to complete the syllabus by October. Then you can give time for PU1 syllabus for November and December. So that is rule number one here is your, or the target number one for you is to complete the PU2 syllabus by October. Okay, that is very, very uh, required for you to get time to prepare for PU1. Next, what I have here is, yeah, next is, don't ignore PU2 boards. Many students think that, okay, PU2 boards we can manage easily. Let's uh, just focus on competitive exams and all. But if you know that for KCT rank determination, you have 50% weightage for PU2. If you crack this, 50% weightage means you should at least target 295 plus in KCT in PU 2026. If you target this one, here if somehow the questions come very difficult or some other, other way you're not able to perform that well how much you have expected, this will take care of it. But if you have not done well here and finally you're not doing well here also, then you will be in trouble. So which is from where we are very sure what type of questions will come, we are very sure that that how the exam pattern will be there right here every year competition is there question patterns might change but this is something which we are very much aware we write two to pre boards three pre boards and we have enough practice for this so let's make sure that we will be targeting very good marks at least
least 290 to 295 plus in your PU board examinations. Okay, so please don't ignore PU boards. Just practice your subjective uh, answers also equally, uh, giving more time to that also. Rule number three, we have the resources, okay? Now, you don't have enough time to do much more resources. I'll be telling you most important resources that you need to follow. First, definitely, is your NCRT book, okay? For every subject, refer to NCRT book. Second, any coaching notes or reference book. Now, here I'll be specifically mentioning that reference book you need to use only for those concepts or those uh, chapters which is not very clear to you from NCRT or you can find just use this reference book to solve more questions rather to go for theory if you read each and every theory it will take more time so just read the concept uh, clarify the concept from NCRT book and then take this the help of this reference book to solve questions next we have short notes so all the chapters that you are studying now the short notes should be ready because these are going to be your most important tools for revision pyqs again very important from last 10 to 15 years you can take mtg book or you can take disha publication book okay for kct pyqs and for uh, pyqs of pu2 you can take jivit book okay or you can take oswal book Okay, these books are very good. Next one, error notebook. This is some study resource I have put and this is very, very important. Just trust me, whenever you are solving this PYQs, okay, whichever questions you are getting wrong, please make an error notebook and write down because these are the points where you are weak at and at the time of revision, you need to focus on these error notebook or you need to revise from these books which questions you have done wrong, which concepts you are not very strong at. You need to revise those concepts from here. Okay, next rule number three is the correct study strategy. So what strategy you should follow at this point of time? So at least for every subject, okay, you need to study two subjects per day. Okay, and I'll say each subject you should give at least two hours. And how that breakup of two hours should be there? Whichever chapter you are studying, you should be giving one hour for its concept. Just to understand the concept. If the chapter is already taught in your class, then I think you should be very thorough with the concept. You will just need one hour to revise. That after that, 30 minutes write the subjective questions. Okay. Or you can re reduce it to one hour, 15 minutes. And this you can reduce for 15 minutes. So just write, try to write one or two subjective answers for that particular chapter. And then for 30 minutes, you can solve KCT, PYQs, MCQ. So 30 minutes means you should be able to solve at least 20 questions in 30 minutes. Okay. You should target like that. Okay, so this with this will help you to do a timed practice to improve your accuracy as well as speed. So whichever, like suppose today you have studied uh, physics, current and electricity, how much ever you have studied. Okay, so it's not that you have completed the whole chapter. If you have studied a few parts of that, just make sure that from that few parts, if any long answer question is there, the subjective question is there, do write down that. You may not have, sometimes you may have. And after that, from those particular concepts that you have studied, solve at least uh, 10 to 20 questions so if you take mtg book it has topic wise questions are given so that will be more relevant you have suppose uh, from solutions chapter henry's law you have completed henry's law 20 questions you can solve okay so that if you purchase that type of question bank that will be more helpful for you okay but otherwise you can just solve the pyqs but whichever questions whichever concepts you have studied those pyqs you have select and you can study, uh, solve okay now uh, this makes me to the uh, last rule that is don't skip mock tests. These are very, very important. So from now onwards, every month you should target at least two mock tests. Now a question may arise, ma'am, we have not completed the syllabus. How much ever syllabus you have completed, based on that you have to do a write, write a mock test. Just to practice the time practice, just to know your accuracy, speed level and whether you have actually mastered that concept or not. Okay, and once the exam is over, so I, if I go from this year, so by March 20, okay, March 20, 2026, your PU board exams will be over, okay, mostly. Then after March 20, so from March 21, you will be having time till 
uh, April, I can say 10 or like April 15 if I hardly take 15 and here 10 days. So la roughly 20 to 24 days you will be having. So in this time you should be at least targeting 10 to 15 mock test. Okay. So this is very important. So this you can do if you have completed all the syllabus previously. If you sit for completing syllabus at this time, then you cannot give time for mock test, right? So make sure that your syllabus is completed well, both PU1 and PU2. PU2 by October, November and December you can give for PU1. From January, February you can focus completely on your PU2 boards and then March you have to focus on completely KCT mock test, okay? So these are the five things overall a study plan that you can follow. Okay, so if you follow this, you can definitely get a top rank. And if you have any other doubt, please put down in the comment section. And start studying students. Be very, very serious from now onwards. So keep smiling and keep shining.